And then we will have Dr. Mortarano and Howard County and the team to come up to present. Good to see you, Dr. Mortarano. Great to see you as well. Senator Casemar, great to you? see you as well, you, sir. Thank you. Good. Good morning, Dr. Salmon, uh, Mr. Grell, members of the IAC, designees and staff. I'm Michael Martirano, the superintendent of the Howard County Public School System. Thank you for inviting us to present the unique challenges faced by our school system and discuss projects for the FY 2021 Capital Improvement <coughs> Program, better known for us as our CIP. I'm joined today by Mr. Scott Washington, Acting Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Daniel Lubley, Acting Director of Capital Planning and Construction. Uh, in the audience, I have Ms. Uh, Vicki Catronio, one of our Board of Education members, and Dr. Chow Wu, one of our Board of Education members as well. And as you can also see behind me, many dedicated parents who are interested in a number of things of which I have to say to the IAC today. First of all, I want to thank you for your initial allocation of $23.5 million in state funding, which represents approximately 53% of the total $44 million requested. We would like to make you aware of some of the very, uh, some of the local concerns as you continue to review the FY 2021 state capital improvement requests. Howard County, as you may know, is the fastest growing county uh, in the state of Maryland and must meet the capital needs of a rapidly growing student population. We expect an increased enrollment of approximately 750 new students in FY 2021. Over the past five years, our enrollment has increased by approximately 1,000 students annually. Just think about that momentarily and the impact that that has. To accommodate this growth, our 10-year uh, long-range master plan includes one replacement and three new elementary schools, three middle school renovation projects, two new high schools, and two high school renovation uh, addition projects. Also, I think it's important uh, for this uh, body to understand that recently our system completed a comprehensive redistricting process to, to balance capacity utilization, taking advantage of where we had our seats and to fill those seats among our existing schools, and to advance equity by addressing the distribution of students affected by poverty as measured by the participation in the free and reduced meals program. When this plan goes into effect, Next year, we will be moving approximately 5,400 students will move to new schools, and 51 of our 77 schools will be within the targeted utilization of 90 to 110 percent capacity, and up from 42, which are currently uh, in that range. At the same time, we will reduce our highest proportion of farms participation of any school from a high of what it currently is at 68, now down to 52 percent, and bring 33 schools closer to the county averages. Our capital planning balances uh, the need to provide additional classroom seats, especially in the fastest growing areas in our county. While we maintain our older schools to ensure safety and efficiency and accommodate new instructional priorities and the needs of changing student populations, our FY 2021 capital improvement program requests include capital investments include the new high school 13 in the southeastern portion of our county, a replacement for Talbot Springs Elementary School and a renovation, a much needed renovation in addition at Hammond High School. We ask that you consider the status of the following projects. One, the new High School 13, LEA priority number one, our number one priority. We thank you for recommending 23.5 million uh, in funding for the new school project and we ask that you consider funding the remaining 4.5 million requested. The new school will provide approximately 1,660 seats and is urgently needed to relieve the overcrowding in the Eastern County region and balance capacity utilization throughout the system. The building design and construction are intended to achieve LEED Silver certification. The site has been purchased, the construction documents are currently in review, and the Department of General Services and Attendance Area Adjustments are underway with project completion targeted for fall of 2023. Next, Talbot Springs Elementary School is a replacement. That's our LEA priority number two. The project currently has a B status. We request it receive an A status and be fully funded. The new building will replace an aging elementary school with a new modern energy efficiency facility, which will be less costly to construct and maintain over the life of the building in comparison to a school renovation and addition. When completed, the school will add approximately 160 seats and provide facilities to accommodate many essential resources and services to support students and families in one of Howard County's most disadvantaged communities. 
It will support access by our most vulnerable students for nutrition, clothing, language supports, and social services that are essential prerequisites to learning and achievement. Next, Hammond High School renovation and replacement, our next priority. The project currently has a B status. We requested to receive an A status and be fully funded. The project will renovate an existing aging facility and expand educational program spaces, including six additional classroom spaces, provide approximately 200 new seats, and add the Comar compliant health suite. Systemic upgrades will emphasize energy efficiency as well. Our last area is Hammond Middle School Boiler. That's our next priority. This project currently has a B status, and we request it receives an A status and be fully funded. The project will replace an existing 1987 boiler plant system with a new highly efficient system. State support of these projects is essential to enable our system to complete construction and maintenance that are critical in addressing our enrollment growth needs while prolonging the life aging facilities. This support is essential to avoid further strain on an already strained budget. We appreciate the support. The cooperative relationship we've had with the public school construction program, and we will continue to work closely with the IAC uh, to constructively resolve the challenging issues facing our school system today and in the future. Again, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to share and discuss our concerns. Uh, we look forward to receiving your favorable support for funding for the FY 2021 CIP request and express my great appreciation and acknowledge the challenges of which we have in a very uh, robust growing uh, school system in Howard County. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Martirano. Questions? Um, I have a question. Yes, Denise. Um, as far as the new high school number 13, can you help me understand, are you following LEED certification with the U.S. Green Building Council? Are you actually going to go through that process to get the certification, or are you just following the guidelines? We're, we're, we're actually, um, Scott Washington, acting as chief operating officer, we're actually going through the USGBC. We actually will have the official LEED certification for that building. And is that something that, moving forward, Howard County is looking to do for all your schools? We have basically been doing that for the majority of my schools uh, since 2010. If any time we have a brand new school, of course, by state regulation, but also for our systemic renovations, we've done it as well. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have uh, 12 or 13 schools at this time, one platinum, three gold, and about nine silver. Is there a delta of cost um, in doing that versus just following the, the guidelines is my question. Dean Manishelli. <clears throat> Good morning, Dan Lubley, Acting Director of Capital Planning and Construction. When we do follow the lead guidelines and go for achieving an actual certification, <coughs> um, we are seeing approximately a four to five percent increase, um, specifically with regards to lead, versus if we follow the guidelines but did not get registered, we are seeing approximately a four to five percent construction cost. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Churchill. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'll also note, just for uh, public consumption, that uh, due to uh, uh, HB 1783, yeah, legislation um, uh, from this uh, last year, that uh, General Services did come out with uh, new guidelines uh, for LEAs to consider, right. which may or may not consider uh, lead certification. So you do have that option there uh, to. Uh, uh, to consider. Correct. And we, we are exploring those guidelines as well. As okay. we continue with our designs right now, we're trying to weigh our options between, actually, I do believe it was the three that we were given to kind of look to see which was the best and most efficient use of our dollars. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being Thank here you. today. Great seeing all of you. Good to see you too. All right.